Hey guys, and welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni, and this is AP Statistics. Today we're going to be covering histograms. Now, in another video, I'm going to outline how you create a histogram on your calculator. But for right now, I want to teach you how to do it by hand, from scratch, absolutely on your own. Here's the deal. If you don't know how to do it on your own, then it's a lot harder for you to read them and understand them when they pop up in questions. So today, let's go ahead and dive in to creating our first histogram. Now here's the deal. We use histograms for quantitative data. Now bar graphs, pie charts, and all of that is great when we're dealing with categorical data, but when we have a breakdown of numbers, we need something that can handle numbers. And that's where a histogram comes into play. Now a lot of people talk about the similarities and differences between a histogram and a bar graph. In the end, they do look very similar, but you'll notice that a histogram will always have numbers across the bottom, whereas a bar graph may not because it deals with categorical data. Since we're dealing with quantitative data, we start off with a giant list of numbers. Now, obviously, looking at a large list of numbers is not very helpful. We can't really see any patterns or any unusual features about the data. Instead, we need to represent it visually. That's where a histogram comes into play. The first thing we need to do is decide our bins. Now, what is a bin? A bin is simply where you take your numbers in groupings, so let's say from one to 10 or something like that, and you count how many of the numbers in your data set fall within that range. That range is called your bin. So we are separating our data as a whole into a bunch of different bins. We then place all these bins on our graph to create our distribution. Now a distribution is just when you're looking at all of your data as a whole. That's where you notice your patterns or your trends. It's where you're able to describe the data as a group. That's your distribution. The left-hand side of our graph is the frequency. That's where it tells us how many people fell into each one of these bins. So as we look through all of our data, we check out all the numbers and we say, all right, how many of them fell into this bin? And then the height of the bar is based off of that number. We'll go ahead and grab a pencil and paper because we're getting ready to dive into our first histogram. Now, here's the data set we're going to deal with today. It is ages of people in a restaurant at a given point in time. Notice there are a ton of small numbers, but there's also larger ones as well, because as you think about a restaurant, some of them may have kids with them or some people may have no kids at all. So when we're looking at the age ranges, it varies by quite a bit. Now, you'll notice our smallest number here is one, whereas our largest number is 63. So how can I get a graph that will encompass everything from 1 to 63? A usual easy rule of thumb is to just do a round by 10. So 63, we have to make sure we at least hit that. So the next multiple of 10 would be 70. So I'm going to have my graph go from at least 0 to 7. Once we know where we're starting and ending, we need to figure out how many bins we want to have in that range. Now, there's no right answer here, but I can tell you that you don't want a histogram that only has like three or four bars. You want to have at least five or more, maybe even seven or more. Also, you don't want to have a ton of bars because if they're just a whole bunch of skinny little things, it's going to start not making sense to someone looking at it. So instead, we need to find a little happy medium there. In this case, I want to go with seven. Why? Because that allows me to jump by little chunks of 10 and still have at least seven bars in my graph. Now, you do have to be careful when you split these up because notice how my bins that I've just laid out on the screen for you go from 0 to 9, then 10 to 19, and so forth. Notice it doesn't go from 0 to 10. Why? Well, if you include 0 in it and you count on your fingers, you'll see that 0 to 9 is actually a group of 10 numbers. But more importantly, you've got to be careful about the cutoff. If I'm dealing with a graph and I had someone who literally fell on the age range of 10, then which bin would I put them in? Would I put them in a zero to 10 bin or would I put them from the 10 to 20 bin? So instead of putting 10 as both the end of your first bin and the start of the second bin, I put nine as the end of my first bin and 10 as the start of my next bin. Now you can set a cutoff to be like a decimal, maybe 9.5 and then from 9.6 up, it's into the next one. But in this situation, since we're just dealing with how many years someone is, it's easy to make the cutoff right there at nine to 10. Now, our next step is to go ahead and find out how many 
people fell in each one of these bins. So starting off zero to nine, you can see we have the one, the four, the five, another four, a nine, and a six, which gives us a total of six people that fell into that bin. We can continue this to find all of our other bins. For example, from 10 to 19, we have the 18, the 16, and the 19 for a total of three people that fell into that bin. And we can continue doing this with all the others until we fill up our entire chart. Now that we have our chart, we can go ahead and start working on our actual graph. So for our histogram, we want to make sure we start, just like most graphs, labeling our axes. So across the bottom, across the bottom, is going to be the age that we're dealing with of people at this restaurant. Whereas up the left-hand side, that's the number of people that are going to fall into each of those age ranges. Now, when we are creating our first bar, we want it to go from 0 to 10. Why not 0 to 9? Well, even though 9 is technically the end of our bar for our first bin, we go all the way up to the start of the next bar to show that anyone that fell in that range from 9 or 9 and 5 months, or 9 and 10 months, that that still falls in zero to nine. So by having all of our bars run into each other, we fill the whole graph, which is a requirement for a histogram. So our first bar from zero to nine would look something like this. Notice it goes up to six because that's how many people fell in that bin. I can do the same with my next bar from 10 to 19, should go up to the three mark. Notice again, the bar ends at the 20 mark instead of 19 because it includes all people that were like 19 years old and seven months. And we can continue the rest of the graph like this. So we have all of our bars and we have a beautiful looking histogram like this one in front of you. Boom, bonus material. Guys, it would be absolutely silly to cover histograms and not relative frequency histograms because the only difference is instead of making the chart out of the counts on the left-hand side, we're instead going to do it out of the percents, just like we did when we were looking at our frequency charts. Now, that means that all I need to do is go back and find the percents of each one of the numbers in our chart that we had before. So whereas we had six out of the 20 customers that fell into the zero to nine range, we can find what percent that was out of the total of 20 by doing six divided by 20 to give us 30%. Then we can move through the rest of them in the same way of doing three divided by 20 and five divided by 20 and so forth to fill in the rest of our chart. But from there, this is what's crazy. The graph hardly changes. Here's what our graph originally was for our histogram, but now our new one looks like this. As you can see, there's like no change. Why? Because relative to all of the other bars, nothing is changing. The only thing that's changing is the left-hand side of the graph. Instead of saying number of people, it's going to say the percent of people. Notice when we switch back and forth between the two, your shape of the graph should never change. Well, guys, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something new about histograms. Remember, if this was helpful at all today, go ahead and hit the like button below. Also, if you want to keep getting videos like this for your class, click the subscribe button and you will be updated weekly with new content. Again, my name is Daniel Caproni, and thanks for joining me for this week's AP Statistics.